Hello and welcome to another video from Mr. Kumado. In this video, we are going to derive the famous Black-Scholes equation. And the Black-Scholes equation derivation uses three key principles in finance. And the first one is using the principle of no arbitrage opportunity. And the second one is also using delta hedging. And the last one, very important, is Ito's lemma. So we're going to see these three in action in this video. Um, we have an option, option value that we write as V, which is a function of these variables and parameters. The usual variables S for underlining, underlining stock, and T for time. The parameters sigma and mu, uh, where sigma is the volatility, and it goes all the way to R for the interest rate. Okay, so we begin by um, setting a portfolio and we let pi denote a portfolio of one long position and a short position in some quantity delta of the underlying asset. So mathematically speaking, our portfolio pi is given as Vs comma T minus delta S. Okay, we also make an assumption that the underlying stock S follows a geometric Brownian motion and for that matter, ds will be given as mu s dt plus sigma s ds. We then get d pi from here to be equal to dv minus delta ds. This is from just what we have from pi. We also know from Ito's lemma, and if you haven't watched the video already on Ito's lemma, then you can watch my video on Ito's lemma where I have explained everything to do with Ito's lemma, a very important lemma in financial mathematics. So here, Ito's lemma gives us dv to be partial b, partial t dt, plus partial v, partial s ds, plus one half sigma squared x squared, partial squared v, ds squared dt. Now, all we need to do from here is to substitute dv into this equation we've got here. So if I call this equation star, we are going to substitute this into equation star. So we have the pi equals partial v, partial t dt, plus partial v partial s ds plus one half sigma squared s squared partial squared v ds squared dt minus delta ds. Now this delta is a quantity that we can choose. So we are going to choose delta in this case. If you look at this carefully, dt and dt over there are deterministic. The only randomness we have is coming from here with the ds and over here with the ds. Okay, so rearranging give us d pi equals partial v partial t plus one half sigma square s square dv um, partial square v ds square into bracket dt plus partial v partial s minus delta into bracket ds. Now at this time, this bit is deterministic since there's no randomness here and this bit is stochastic because of the ds we've got over here. So this is where all the randomness is. So to eliminate the randomness here, we make a choice of delta to be equal to partial V partial S. If we choose delta to be partial V partial S and we substitute into this, then we're going to have partial V partial S minus partial V partial S, which will be zero. Therefore, we will eliminate DS. So this then becomes the pi equals partial V partial T plus one half sigma squared s squared partial square v over the s squared or into bracket then we have our dt this clearly shows that the change in the portfolio is riskless there's no stochastic element here so therefore this is risk risk free and um, as a result of that if we had a cash and we put the cash into a riskless account then we would expect that the change in the cash should be equal to Say for example, if you have pi as in a cash amount and you put it into a bank account, then you expect pi, the pi, to be equal to R, which is the interest rate of the bank account that you, you get the risk free rate, times by pi dt. So from here, we can equate these two and also make a few substitutions with pi. Okay, so we've got d pi equals that, and we also got d pi equals that. So therefore, we can equate these two bits here. 
So we have r pi dt equals all of that bit in the bracket. Here we divide both sides by dt to cancel the dt, but we know that pi is giving us v minus delta s. That's the portfolio. So we substitute pi in here and also delta, we know delta was partial v partial s. So we are going to substitute delta in here. So as we follow this with the substitution for pi, this is pi, and also for delta, we've substituted partial v partial s, and we get this. We can then cancel the variable side by dt to get rid of dt, and we have this remaining. And then all we have to do now is to expand and rearrange. So if we expand this bracket here and rearrange, we have partial v partial t plus one half sigma squared s squared partial squared v partial s squared plus r s partial v partial s minus r v equals to zero. And this is the famous Black-Scholes equation.